Welcome to the Property Manager Podcast. I am Rachel Graham from Buildium, and today I have stolen the mic from Tony Maiella, who still joins me today, uh, along with Fred Tracy and Rachel Palmashano. How are you all today? Good. It's, it's quite all right. It's quite all right. <laughs> Tony's not happy. Well, today's episode, we are talking with Amir Frank from Matterport. You know, at Buildium, we are always keeping an eye on all the cool stuff that's going on in the prop tech space. And, you know, with listings for years, we have gotten used to seeing pictures of a listing that we might be checking out if we're looking at a new apartment or a new home. Matterport is an innovator in this space. They take that idea uh, several steps forward. Uh, so loved being able to talk to him this week. Tony, you went into this interview, I mean, typically you go on podcasts and as soon as you hear like a big company, you just assume going into it, it's going to be a list of features. They're going to just be talking what what's coming down the pipeline. But like that wasn't your goal going into this. You want to approach this really differently. So I'm curious, what was your mindset going into this? What were you trying to accomplish and get out of Amir? Well, I think uh, that, that's a great question, Fred. I think you know, what I was trying to get at was the philosophical shift that's actually been happening. I think, you know, with all of us, right. Uh, that is driving all of this because Amir is obviously pretty close to that working at Matterport. He sees the impact of what's working, what people are using his technology for. Uh, and I just think it's really interesting now that COVID has pushed everybody inside or a lot of folks inside and in different situations than they're used to. It's sort of starting to shift consumers' perspectives and their willingness to make buying decisions um, completely virtually. So it opens up the, the floodgates for technology like this and really lets consumers be seated at the, you know, really at the driving wheel for, for all of these decisions. Yeah, Matterport and the team there, they're pioneers within the, the, the prop tech and the real estate tech space. And they're creative ones at that too. Well, we will get right into this conversation. It's a fun one. Um, Tony, it was clear you and Amir had a great time talking about all the possibilities. Um, but since I'm holding the mic, does that mean this week I get to say roll it, Fred? Oh, I would be honored. Can you? <laughs> all right. Well, without further ado, let's roll it. Happy tenant is a good tenant. Hello, everybody. Welcome to season three of the Property Measure Podcast. My name is Tony Maiola. Today, I'm actually here with Amir Frank from Matterport. Uh, welcome, Amir. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me, Tony. Yeah, great to have you. Now, uh, for those of you out there, one of the things that we're going to be talking about today is really all the maybe behind the curtain, uh, all the things you hadn't thought of with virtual technology like Matterport. Because most people, when they think of Matterport or when they think of that sort of trend, they think of listings, um, and that's definitely right, but there's a lot more than meets the eye there. In fact, 25% of property managers that we surveyed in the 2021 industry report actually use virtual uh, and 360 degree tour tools right now in their leasing. So and that number is sure to keep growing. Now from Google Trends as well, interest in the search term virtual tour software doubled to approximately 100% interest in March, and then again in August for obvious re reasons due to the pandemic. Um, but there's so much more than meets the eye, like I was saying, uh, to virtual technology and finding far more use cases. Um, there are just far more use cases other than showing. So that's why I'm so excited to be talking with you, Amir, today uh, to really understand how PMs can best put virtual technology into practice and how it's evolving. So first question um, for you, Amir. Now, for those out there who don't know, uh, tell us a little bit about Matterport. Sure. Uh, so Matterport is an intent solution that provides you with uh, a digital twin of, of a space, basically, we're, we're a, a spatial data company. Right. Um, what that means is we provide the hardware, you can buy a Matterport camera, but also you don't have to buy a Matterport camera, you can uh, use any number of uh, supported cameras, from 360 cameras to laser scanners, uh, even your iPhone, to right. scan a property and create a 3D model. So it's important to distinguish between a 3D model and just a 360 tour. So that, that's kind of what differentiates us is that spatial data. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's very interesting. So a lot of people associate Matterport solely with virtual tour software. And so how do you like further define that and define your product categories? Yeah, exactly. So um, as I was saying, you know, the difference between Matterport and, and as you said, a lot of people do see it as a virtual tour platform. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what we're trying to do is actually provide uh, much more information than just a virtual tour. Mm -hmm. uh, the 
by providing you with a 3D model, you are able to actually take measurements. And that's a very, very big deal uh, in so many different use cases and in other industries, you know, outside of just uh, promotion where you just want to see the property. Yeah, so let's uh, let's dive more into that. You said taking measurements, providing 3D models in addition to just the more expected and, and more uh, well-known virtual tour element. What does the tech currently do? Okay, uh, yeah, so the tech, um, when you have a 3D model, not only can you see it from a perspective that would otherwise be impossible, like the dollhouse and floor plan view, uh, as soon as all that model data has been processed, you have access to those immediately. You don't have to wait for uh, a floor plan to be generated or anything like that by hand. Uh, you have a floor plan view. You can take measurements uh, of room widths, uh, things like that, uh, as well as the dollhouse view, which really gives you a bird's eye perspective of the property and shows you uh, where rooms, things are in proximity to other things. Uh, so if, you know, on, if you're searching uh, through uh, properties and it's very important for you that uh, the bathroom not be adjacent to the kitchen, uh, just having, you know, 360s uh, images, things like that, slideshows isn't enough. As soon as you see the dollhouse, you can see exactly how the entire property is laid out, uh, which just provides you with so much more information about that property. Right. And I mean, let's be honest right now, that's so important because we uh, can't really be anywhere we want to be. And we want to sort of keep our social distance, of course. Uh, and we heard that loud and clear in our 2021 Instant Report research as well, where 50% of property owners said that they're actively looking for a PM who can offer this type of virtual enabled uh, digital service. So I think Matterport plays a huge part in that. Now, how do you think property managers can most benefit from having their properties mapped out in this way virtually? Um, well, so I would say it provides property managers with a number of abilities, actually. And again, this kind of goes back to being able to use things like measurements. Uh, you can, for example, set up a, a Zoom meeting with a potential customer or client, uh, have your screen shared um, and you know, with the Matterport model, and you can kind of guide them through that. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you can uh, take measurements of things. You can you know, point out uh, certain aspects of the property that they may otherwise kind of miss. So you're guiding them as close to as possible, you know, without actually being there, you're, you're kind of uh, taking them through the property um, in the same way, right? Virtually uh, making sure that everything meets their needs, uh, whether it be, if it needs to be ADA compliant, you can measure uh, the width of doorways and things like that uh, just to confirm that it actually will work out for their needs. Yeah. And so, as, of course, like during the pandemic and right now, this is even more important. Uh, what are some specific use cases that you've seen? And I know we talked a little bit about a couple of things for especially around like renovations, um, which is, you know, a, a big thing that's happening right now, especially as some vacancies are popping up. I'm curious along those lines, what the, what you're seeing. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, in terms of vacancies, it's a great opportunity to, uh, to collaborate with uh, potential uh, handyman and contractors to fix up the place. And again, you can just uh, meet with them in, in a Zoom meeting and walk through the property, uh, show them exactly what it looks like right now in its current state. Uh, they can take measurements themselves. They don't even you know, need you. You can just send the link uh, to give you a proper estimate of what repairing would cost. Uh, if there's any kind of damage that's been done uh, potentially after uh, uh, tenants has left, again, you can scan that and provide that to uh, insurance companies uh, to estimate what the cost would be. Right. So in, in the inspections process. Yeah, that's great. In, yeah, exactly. An in inspection. So it's not just for promotion. It goes well beyond that, uh, you know, collaboration with um, customers uh, who are interested in, in purchasing uh, the owners of the place. You can show them what it looks like. I mean, you could have properties that are out of state and, you know, from, from the owner, the owner is not even in the same state. Are they going to keep tabs on it? How do they know what's happening in there? I mean, this is their investment, right? It's a very important yep. uh, asset. 
And so this is a way for you to collaborate with the homeowners, with the tenants, with potential uh, you know, people who, uh, who come in to, to do repairs, uh, as well as insurance, and if that you know, happens to be the case. Yeah, that's a really good point because you know, when, you, when you talk about uh, that whole process, it's not just about working with the contractor, but it's also about presenting the work, right? If What if the owner, as you're saying, they're not in the same state, they can't go and see it for themselves. Well, guess what? They're going to want to see the final product. They're going to want to see how things turned out, you know, how well of a, a general contractor you hired, like how good of a job they did, and then what the sort of net impact of that will be to their rents, like at the end of the month, right? Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. That's exactly right. So it's just, it's a tool that just goes so far beyond promoting a space. Uh, it really assists with collaboration and uh, information. Uh, we've seen facility managers use it, uh, if you, you know, not just for scanning the apartment itself, but the building, uh, the hallways, the, the fire escapes, uh, the lobbies, things like that. Uh, so that facility managers can be better trained. You can include uh, matter tags with, uh, you know, the PDF documentation for how to material about anything, uh, you know, information about the electrical panels and, and just about anything you can imagine can be kind of inside this one model as sort of a, an informational hub uh, that allows you to collaborate with, with anybody. That's great. Now let's get into logistics a little bit of how you use it. And I'm sure that a lot of property managers out there who are already using it uh, and certainly other people in, in the real estate industry that use it already know it's, it's not that complicated. Um, like essentially how would a property manager work this technology into their different processes? Um, I think it's pretty, it's a pretty simple, simple thing to do at the end of the day. Right. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's very simple. Um, you know, as, as I mentioned, there's a lot of different uh, cameras that are supported and that you can use to uh, capture a 3d model to use to capture that 3d model. Um, and so you can decide whether you want to capture it yourself. If you have a 360 camera, if you want to just use your iPhone, uh, the different cameras, you know, will result in, in a different end product. Uh, but depending on what you need, what you're using it for, that, you know, will help you determine which camera you need. Uh, if you do need something a little bit higher end, like the Pro 2, again, that's certainly uh, doable. You can either get that yourself and do it, depends on your situation. You can also uh, hire a, a photographer to do it. There are Matterport uh, providers who, who provide, uh, you know, Matterport scanning as a service. Oh, interesting. Yeah, where, where do you find that information? Is that on your site or there, is there a database you have of, of different professionals? Uh, yeah. So on our site, there, uh, there is a, a place where you go to, uh, to buy a camera. You also have the option to find a photographer. Very cool. Yeah. And I would imagine too, like probably a good piece of advice, depending on the kind of camera or uh, way you decide to capture, uh, you know, your, uh, your units will depend on the audience and really what your end goal is for the use case. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's the right camera for the, for the job. So, I mean, that's, that's what we always advocate. It's not, uh, you know, not all the cameras uh, will produce the same final product. So depending on your need and your use case, uh, just make sure you choose the right uh, tool for the job. And uh, like I said, if it's something that, that you already have available to you, give it a shot, try it to see what happens, um, you know, see if that meets your needs. Uh, if that's not quite there and you need to step up something like the uh, Pro 2, then um, you know, gonna, if, if purchasing one is not an option, then certainly, like I said, uh, hiring a photographer to do it is, is a fantastic option. Yeah, and maybe this goes without saying, but for me, if you have a... Uh... You know, if you have a luxury listing, something that's kind of posh, uh, you probably want the nice camera if that's something that you're trying to capture. Uh, you probably want to invest a little bit more on that side of the equation. Whereas if maybe you're using it for inspections, um, maybe you don't need that. So I think it's, it, it probably varies just depending on what your end goal is. So that's, that's awesome to hear. Now, what are some lesser known hacks of using uh, virtual and 3D software uh, to make the resident experience and uh, resident management even easier. In our software, we provide the ability to include things like matter tags. Oh yeah, you mentioned that before. Yeah, could you explain what that what that is a little bit more? Sure. Uh, so a matter tag is basically just this uh, small uh, little circle puck that uh, you stick to your uh, 3D model. You can put as many as you want really uh, in your model. 
And when the visitor rolls over that with their mouse, uh, they get to see things like uh, the description, you can embed uh, images, uh, PDF documents, you can actually embed entire models within the matter tag itself, what else, as well as links. So that's pretty important because links can obviously direct you to uh, forms that someone could fill out. If, for example, it's a, it's a tenant and you need them to get a hold of you, you want them to fill out a form, not just some random email that doesn't have quite as much information as you need. So, you know, you can create this uh, Google form uh, and uh, that obligates them to, to complete, you know, the, the right amount of information that uh, would actually help you. Uh, <laughs> you know, basically get back to them with, uh, with better information, more, more informed. Amir, I think that has so much potential for, for property managers to use something like that. Um, it's huge. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, you know, just like, imagine you, you manage a multifamily. A lot of the units are the same. Uh, you get the same kind of questions from residents every time they move in. Um, you know, there are quirks of course to each unit, uh, that only, you know, because things have been, fixed or there's just sort of quirks with the building that you've had to deal with over the years and your team has to deal with. So just having the ability to three to tag things in 3D, I mean, you can basically tag a switch that turns on the, the, the disposal in the sink. You can tag where the fuse box is. You can tag uh, with a link uh, to um, make a maintenance request. You know, I, I just think the possibilities are kind of Kind of endless there and that, that's very exciting to me because i love that augmentation aspect yeah absolutely um no the, the tags are are absolutely 100 percent. you know one of the key features and just give you the ability to add so much more information into the model uh again you know if you see the model as as this kind of informational hub uh within a tag like you said you can uh you know, show electrical panels, you can say exactly which switch is which and instead of going to a panel and starting to like test, does this turn it off to this, you know, you don't know what's what, especially for facility managers, you can have the tag just completely lay it out for you. That's yeah, that's, that's amazing. Now, uh, as far as other uh, technological wonders, are there any special integrations that, uh, that you could tell us about, like as far as an open API or any integrations into syndication or a uh, listing functionality that can help, um, you know, get a, get the word out about a listing. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, I mean, a lot of times, uh, you know, a listing is going to be uh, very bare bones and, and empty. So there is work being done to uh, virtually stage uh, a model. So you can scan it, even though there's nothing there. I, you know, it's important, just like it is with selling real estate, uh, renting real estate, it's important to kind of give potential clients and tenants kind of the ability to envision themselves in that space, how they would be in that space. And that's, that's why staging is such a huge business. So, you know, potentially instead of, you know, spending $3,000 to stage an apartment, you can just have it virtually staged. In fact, you can possibly have it virtually staged in a couple different um, you know, themes and, and uh, design, uh, I guess, ways of designing different uh, differently. That's so interesting. And, and of course, like anybody in real estate knows that staging is so important to, you know, whether you're you know, a real estate broker selling a listing or in a property, uh, the case of a property manager, you could be renting out a fully furnished unit um, and it could be on the higher end of things. Um, but regardless, I mean, having that, being able to sell the idea of how it will, what it will be like to live in that home is key. Yeah. So, you know, not only are, are there companies actually providing virtual staging as a service that you can choose to, to pay for, but also um, VR, via the SDK uh, and API, you know, one could potentially do it themselves. Yeah, it's super interesting too when you think of all the CAD programs that are out there for, for designers and I'm sure that those agencies would be using to reconstruct a certain, maybe even a certain brand of sofa that you know uh, that that the that the property owner or that the property manager is putting in every unit to then replicate that as good as they can. Um, super interesting stuff. Um, now this is all you know. It's got me thinking about all the possibilities. Where could this technology go? Um, what do you think uh, the future of virtual technology holds in general for the real estate industry beyond what we've already talked about? Yeah, so I, I think we're really just scratching the surface, um, you know, with the ability to collaborate 
on something like a digital twin that that's you know what we're calling these models because essentially you're getting uh, a, a twin of a real space that exists in real life you've got this uh, digital 3d model of it that um, again just allows you to collaborate and become just that much more efficient you know less uh, less time spent flying from you know one place to another in order to take measurements and you've got these arch architectural firms uh, that need to fly uh, the, all their employees to different facilities just to be able to take measurements and create these uh, schematic mock-ups in AutoCAD. Uh, that could potentially be a thing of the past, right? You just hire a local photographer to go out and Matterport the, the structure and you've got it in AutoCAD, it's done. Uh, so I think the ability to just make that type of business with uh, insurance uh, construction, um, you know, promotion, just a lot more efficient and collaborative. Yeah, that's, that's so interesting as well. And, you know, if everything is mapped out in 3D at the end of the day, if that augmentation is there, um, even if the apartment and the unit is vacant and maybe when things get back to normal, right, you could easily have someone uh, looking through their iPad at a room that has all of that, all of the the I would the the whole decoration all the decoration just placed in the room as it's intended to be, right? So I think yeah. that's kind of that that's that's mind blowing, and I, I know that that will I'd love to see that. I'm reminded of uh, days past when I used to go to AAA to get maps when I would plan out a, a cross country trip, and they would kind of highlight the route that I should take to go from one place to another. I mean, nobody even, like, who does that anymore? You just go into Google Maps because everything has been digitalized. Yep. Or, or everything has been digitized uh, in, in Google Maps. And, and you can just put the two locations and you know exactly what you need to do. You've got uh, something on the side that you want, you just move the map over. So having things be digital just opens up a tremendous amount of possibilities. Yeah, and I think I might be dating myself here too, but I, I, I can tell you, I remember when I used to print out MapQuest directions and just be sort of like nice. glancing at like the seat next to me, you know, trying to drive across the, the you know, the Brooklyn Bridge or any bridge in New York, just trying to figure out where the heck I was uh, trying to navigate things. And so, yeah, things have changed. And so that's the same kind of thing, you know, where, where we're going with, with digitizing uh, the built world. Is, is that type of mentality is just becoming so much more efficient and practical in, in how you go about doing things. Yeah, um, that, that's awesome. Now, as far as ROI and sort of quantifying the value of this, it's, it's, it's a hard thing to do, right? Uh, at the end of the day, because it's gonna vary for every company, but how do you quantify the ROI of investing in a technology like Matterport for, uh, for your customers? So yeah, as far as uh, numbers go, uh, you know, we do have some some customers, and again, it, it totally depends on your use case uh, and your vertical, and, and and how you're using the Matterport model and what you're doing with it. But uh, here's just a, a quick example that um, we have from a company called Zumper, who says that almost three quarters, seventy one percent of renters would lease a home sight unseen if they had a three D tour. Ninety five percent of renters would be more likely to lease a home if it had um, if it had a 3D tour over one that didn't. So just to kind of give you an, an, an idea of, you know, how much more comfortable I think being able to see a home in 3D versus just images or 360 panos uh, can make someone feel before, you know, signing on the dotted line. Right, and those numbers will probably continue to increase uh, over, you know, in the coming months uh, for obvious reasons, <laughs> right? Yeah, as, as it becomes more of a standard, right? I mean, it, you used to be able to list uh, a home uh, for rent and sale without any pictures and people would just show up. Uh, I think that's going to be the case where if you don't have a picture, people just aren't going to show up. They're not going to see it as relevant and avoid it. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Now, uh, last question I have for you uh, really has to do with creative use cases for Matterport. Uh, recently, I was uh, you know just looking around at Twitter, and there was a story that came up of a property that had a virtual tour that was almost like you know walking through a virtual horror show, uh, and, and I just thought, wow, that's I never expected to see you know the virtual uh, virtual software used in that creative uh, of a way for content. Um, so I'm curious what examples uh, 
there are that you've heard of and you've seen in your experience? Yeah, sure. Um, so definitely we've seen a lot of Matterport models come by and, you know, very creative use cases uh, and not just uh, for you know, professional use. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, we have seen things like, uh, you know, stores providing treasure hunts uh, just as a motivation for their visitors to kind of move around uh, the store, familiarize themselves with the store. Uh, and they would offer a prize at the end, basically, if you can, uh, find these different uh, things or assets uh, in the store, little trinkets that, that we have laying around. Um, come back to us with, with the list of, of all everything that you found. And if you get everything, uh, then you win a, I don't know, a gift card to the store. Uh, so things like that are, are pretty interesting. Uh, we also have uh, the Winchester Mystery House. I don't know how familiar you are with that. But that's- no, tell me a little more about that. So the Winchester Mystery House um, is kind of a tourist attraction here in uh, Northern California. It's the Winchester of the, you know, the, the gun, I guess, um, uh, franchise uh, company. That, uh, and so the, I've personally never been to the Winchester Mystery House, but uh, it was created by uh, the widow of Mr. Winchester. And she was apparently a little bit crazy. So she would have the contractors build staircases leading to nowhere, uh, things like that. So it's a very, very bizarre uh, structure and, and home. And uh, so there is a model of that. And the Winchester Mystery House is kind of showing that, especially during you know, these times of COVID. They're, they're using that as a way to kind of get people uh, interested in their, uh, their tour. Yeah, I love those creative examples. And, you know, uh, when you were explaining the retail uh, scenario, it kind of made me think of escape the room and almost like, a, you know, that kind of scavenger hunt where you have to figure things out. So very cool. Um, yeah, you can totally do an escape room, right? With tags linking to different places that provide different clues. And, uh, and eventually you get to, I guess, like the... Yeah, you get out of the room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get out of there and... <laughs> Yeah, one, one could definitely design a mystery room uh, scenario, uh, you know, and hop in between with, with several Matterport models, right? It doesn't have to be just uh, limited to one because, again, in a tag, you can create a link that leads to another one, which has, you know, more stuff to, to look at and discover. And so. So, I, think, I, think we found, I think we found our next uh, content side project, Amir. <laughs> uh, well, Amir, it was great talking with you today. And again, thank you for sharing all this awesome information on, you know, what's going on, on, going on with virtual software three day tours and uh, yeah, we'll hope to have you on the show again sometime soon. That'd be great. Thanks so much for having me. It was a pleasure. All right. Second, Rachel grabbing the mic (laughs) to start our little recap discussion. I thought this was super interesting. I've been fooled by many apartment listings in the past that show pictures that are not similar at all to the actual apartment. You know, they, make it look bigger and a lot cuter than it actually is and you have no idea what the layout is like. So even if you're someone like myself who would prefer to see an apartment in person, you can narrow down your list based on these 3D tours. Instead of wasting a whole weekend looking at 10 different apartments, you can just find the ones that have the best layout and suit your needs and the ones you can picture yourself moving around in and then just look at those. So I think this is really exciting for renters. Yeah, that Zumper stat that he talked about where like three quarters of renters would be willing to lease a place sight unseen if they had the ability to experience this, that I'm way too much of a control freak on that. (laughs) Um, But I I do like the the analogy that he used about what is possible, um, both in like the cool and interesting side, but also in the efficiency side of things. You know, the analogy that he used with the triptych, you know, where you used to get like a hand highlighted map to get you from point A to point B. And then, you know, in today's world, you know, Google Maps or Apple Maps, they'll show you like what great restaurants are nearby or like cool attractions that you should probably you know, veer off the highway and go check out. And so all of that, um, like the additional um, experience that is possible because of a technology like this is just fascinating. And speaking of maps, this is great for people moving states or moving long distances who can't even tour the apartment. That's not even an option for them. So this definitely would give you a better sense of what you'll be moving into. Yeah, and I think it really shows, I think this is interesting for me, it shows that the technology has advanced to a stage uh, where people trust it now, 
where they feel like they can get enough detail from it where it's credible. And I think that that is so important for something like this because, uh, again, you know, we've, everybody's seen all the, the listings with the fisheye lenses and they, they, they're accustomed <laughs> to that and they've, they've seen that, experienced that, and they've experienced what Rachel, Rachel P. you were talking about. And now that it's, it's, it's at a level where it, has to, it, it accurately represents everything, well, the consumer says, I'm game. I don't need to waste my time either. Yeah. And what he noted with staging and being able to put in 3D furniture, I'm really bad at imagining a blank space and picturing what it could be, okay? I need someone to tell me, the couch goes here, the curtain goes here. I, I'm, I'm so bad. And with this, it's really going to be able to help those people who can't picture what an empty spot looks like or, you know, that disgusting brown leather couch. You know, it actually could look good with, a, a, you know, a luxury couch right there. So selling the idea of the most perfect and ideal state of what it could be, that's really cool. It's a virtual right, interior designer drop. Sounds really fun. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. So let's all give ourselves uh, the in virtual interior designer job titles and, and let's go for it. Well, with that, we obviously loved this episode. Uh, we love talking to uh, our, our guest experts that we bring on the podcast. Thank you for listening. Um, for those of you who are listening for the first time, we love suggestions. So if there's somebody that you'd like to hear from or a topic you'd like us to cover, please email us at podcast at buildium.com. Uh, wherever you are listening to this podcast, we humbly invite you to leave us a five-star review. And with that, I think we will say farewell until the next episode. Catch you later. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Buildium's The Property Manager Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating on iTunes. The Property Manager Podcast can be found at buildium.com slash podcast. If you'd like to be a guest on an upcoming episode, reach out to us at podcast at buildium.com or on any of our social media accounts. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.